A subcutaneous ICD is one where there are no leads in the heart. The lead is placed under the skin and this avoids the problems that have been encountered with devices where the leads are in the heart. The subcutaneous ICD, I think we'll have an increase in share of the um, patients who require an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. In general terms, they're the, for patients who are perceived as being at risk of sudden cardiac death. The benefit, the main benefit, is there are no leads that are in the heart, uh, essentially a leadless system. It has been said that the lead of this standard ICD is the so-called weakest link. That is, it's the part of the system that we prefer was better. The procedure essentially involves, in our practice at least, a general anaesthetic. It can be done with what's called conscious sedation. A small inc incision is made under the left breast. The lead is then tunnelled under the skin. The, div the patient is then fully sedated and the device is tested. Essentially it's done in our practice as an overnight stay in hospital. In some practices it could be done as a day case. It would be different. In terms of a regular ICD, what happens with a regular ICD is the battery needs to be changed at, say, four or five years after the initial implant. The same is, is likely to be encountered with the subcutaneous ICD. The experience with the subcutaneous ICD now goes back to about 2008. Accordingly, not many people have come forward yet for replacement of the battery. I think it's reasonable to say that any complex cardiovascular device, there will be some issues with it. There have been some issues with the subcutaneous ICD. They're the sort of things that I would have anticipated and I've been involved with the development of this system over 10 years. At the moment, I'm not sure exactly the number in the UK. Worldwide, it's a number that's approaching 2,000 patients that have received them. But this is over a period of just around two years in terms of the big increment in numbers. So I expect the rate of increase of use of these devices to now really step up. Well, the first step is to be evaluated for their risk of sudden cardiac death. That is, what is the likelihood that a defibrillator of any sort would benefit that patient? If that decision has been made, that is, that the individual um, would benefit from a defibrillator, then it's a question the patient can ask. Is, am I suitable for this subcutaneous system as opposed to a conventional system? The subcutaneous ICD is not dissimilar to a standard ICD. It's not, in fact, dissimilar to a pacemaker in the sense that within the device itself there is detection mechanisms for rapid heart rhythms, there is a battery, and there is a capacitor that can charge up to give a shock. These are all contained in a small metal box. The subcutaneous ICD fits in the body just under the left breast. It's essentially, there's a small incision, maybe of two or three inches long, and the device goes into a little pocket, as it's called, in that location, and it is stitched in in that location. And the lead is placed within the upper chamber of the device in this sort of um, position. So the lead goes into this upper part of the device. This is not dissimilar to what is done with a standard pacemaker and a standard ICD.